Hi, my name is Jake Lawson, I'm Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Grow. Dr. Jake, it's glad to have you, glad to have you back here. I know you've been busy planting plots and working in the research farm. While you've been gone, we haven't had any rain, so you don't have to worry about that, apparently. Yeah. And we're out here in this cornfield, and I think today we should talk to the folks about drought and drought-like conditions. Absolutely. Um, as you all are probably well aware, in the last week or so, we've had some spotty thunderstorms, and for those who got lucky enough to get that rain, congratulations. Buy yourself a lottery ticket, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> the, most of us were not blessed with that rain in our geography. Um, there are some thunderstorms today, but hopefully we all get a little bit of rain. But yes, it's dry. So Katie, you know, a couple weeks ago, I finished planting my last corn location. We were struggling to find moisture. We had to plant three and a half inches to get good moisture. It's dry, right? Jake, this corn that we're standing in is somewhere around V6. Should we be worried at this point on yield? I would not be very worried at this point on yield. Um, there's a couple things we know about corn physiology and there's some studies to support this. You know, by V8, we start determining uh, kernel Kernel row length, right? So that's really when we can start taking some hits from drought. Um, prior to that, uh, we don't really see a big yield hit from dry conditions. Um, there's some excellent studies done, which we'll post the, the links to some of those figures. But um, you know, bottom line is, in some desert environments, they they are able to establish some different watering regimes, and they really didn't see any yield loss until V6 or after. From droughty conditions and this corn is right now at v6 that we're standing in so and, and that was under severe drought right and this is not severe drought right now according to the drought monitor we are in the lowest category lowest level category of drought so very mild drought jake this corn out here is starting to roll um i know a lot of folks get nervous about that but that's a defense mechanism for corn. Yes. can you tell the folks a little bit more of why that's a good thing to see it roll. Yeah, so it's a good thing to see it roll because what happens is when the, when the crop's rolling up, it's it's trying to conserve the moisture that's coming out of stomata. It's trying to lower the evaporative demand to the atmosphere. So it is a it is absolutely a good thing that the crop's rolling. It is a sign that the crop's beginning to come under water stress, but it's also a good thing that it's rolling. You should be glad that your crop is rolling right now. It doesn't look the best. But you definitely should be happy it's doing that. It's, it's doing its job. If it stops rolling, we have issues. If it stops right? rolling, you've got issues. <laughs> so, okay, it rolls during the day. It goes through the nighttime period. It goes through that respiration, and it comes back the next day unrolled. Can you tell the folks a little bit more about respiration? Yeah, so, um, you know, like you said, Katie, during the day, during the heat of the day, the, the top couple inches of soil are drying out. Um, but at night, water moves from areas of high concentration, low concentration. So at night, the surface soil kind of regenerates itself. The water moves up. The next morning, the crop roots sense that there's moisture and they won't be rolled up until the water becomes deficient enough that the crop roots tell the plant, let's roll up. The water's becoming deficient in moisture. In the evenings, the crop, they may, it may un unroll again because again, it cools down, that water starts moving up. Jake, so, there's some corn out there that's maybe in that V3, even less than that stage. What do you think about that? Like this really young corn, as I'm going to call it, is that in a worse position than some of this corn that's got a nicer root system to it? Um, I wouldn't say that it's in a worse position per se. You know, this entire crop in general has had a good opportunity to develop a nice, healthy root system. This is corn on corn. It's got a beautiful root system on it. You know, that's the one good thing is that we haven't had a lot of saturated soils and this crop's been able to develop a really good root system. Young corn in general, because it has a smaller root system, tends to show symptomology a little bit more, but it's not necessarily that it's hurting it more per se. Okay, good to know. I've had some questions on that this last week. Jake, if this dry conditions, if these dry conditions continue, um, what should we think about for this crop? Like what's it gonna look yeah, like? Yeah, so if you, if dry conditions continue, we're gonna end up with a shorter crop than normal, right? So uh, cells in, the, in the, the stem itself elongate, so these inner nodes will elongate due to turgor pressure and water pressure. And if there's lower turgor pressure or water pressure in the plant, these individual cells are not gonna lengthen as much. So you're gonna see that these nodes are gonna be stacked more on top of one another, and we're gonna have a shorter crop overall. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Yield isn't really very well correlated to height. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but you are going to see that. Jake, a lot of nutrients move um, through water, and we're going to skip over all that. Maybe we could do a lead academy this winter or last in the fall of, of water movement and nutrients. But 
what should we be looking for in these dry conditions? Where are we going to see deficiencies at? Yeah, most nutrients need water uh, to move toward the crop. Um, but potassium tends to be the one that we see show up the worst in dry conditions. Um, you know, potassium uh, in a dry year, the importance of that cannot be overstated. Potassium literally regulates water movement in the crop. Okay, so it, it's really important to have adequate potassium levels all the time, but even more crucial in dry conditions. But what you're going to see in dry conditions is that you're going to start to develop potassium deficiencies in the lower canopy. It's going to start at the very lowest leaf and it's going to work its way up the canopy. The further it works its way up the canopy, the more yield potential we're, allowed, we're, we're likely going to lose from potassium deficiencies. Now, you're not going to see widespread potassium deficiencies necessarily in a drought condition. Just know that it's going to be more common. And just know that if you have a field that's kind of has moderate potassium levels, that's more likely, you know, where you're going to see these symptoms. Now, in a moist year or a really wet year, you can get by with moderate potassium levels and never see deficiencies. But in a dry year, you know, you could even see potassium deficiencies in fields you thought were in really good shape regarding potassium fertility. Sure, that's why it's always important to keep your fertility levels nice and adequate, yes. right? Yes, yes. Uh, overcome some of these it's a safeguard against things like dry conditions sure thanks so dr jake are there any closing comments that you have as we round out this drought video katie i would just say that you know in drought conditions roots become so important and anything that attacks roots or affects roots like corn rootworm other insects nematodes and soybean in particular you, you know all that stuff becomes crucial so you know, while you never want a drought or expect a drought, you should always be thinking about how do I make sure roots stay healthy? Because in a drought condition, you know, all those things are going to matter a lot. When it rains every other day, you know, you could cut half the roots off the plant. It's not going to matter. But in dry conditions, all that stuff matters. Well, thanks for being here with us today, Dr. Jake. And hopefully by posting this video on early season drought, it'll cause it to rain and it won't be relevant. I hope so. Get it posted. I hope so. Hope all the folks out there have Stay in the know with Liquor Grow.